we will go to section number three. On our book, we're looking at Taking Care of the Nursery, that's written by Angie Kangas. And we have Vicki Kangas with us here today, sharing on the nursery. All right, so we're going to look at section three now, uh -huh. the Bible story. What can you share with us about the Bible story? Many times in the nursery, the Bible story is skipped, and that's a mistake. Mm. The children can have a lot of fun and be introduced to God and how much He loves them through a Bible story. It, it can be short, and it needs to have some visuals, because the kids aren't into just sitting and listening like older ones are, so that would be a big mistake. There's all kinds of ways to make it fun with visuals. One of the ways that Angie put in her book is to use puppets. You can buy a puppet. We offer some with our, our materials. Or you can just get an old sock. Nice! And there you have a puppet. And he can tell the Bible story. Fun. So he can tell about how Jesus went to the water. And maybe the puppet is scared of water. He doesn't swim. So he can be real interested <laughs> in the story as the teacher tells the story. And he can interact with it and say things that the kids are thinking. Try and think ahead what the kids are thinking about it. That, yeah, I like the splash. That kind of thing. Now that's one type of puppet. Here's another one, even more simple. This is two styrofoam balls on a little tiny piece of uh, pipe cleaner. And he's a puppet. And he can talk. And he can tell the story. And he can look at the kids and say, Oh, good listening, Jose. Wow! <laughs> Do you already know this story? So your puppet can be involved in it. And I, in a preschool, I saw a teacher who had forgotten to bring her puppet with her. And so she was up a creek, and the kids weren't listening very well to the story. So she found a puppet right here. She talked with her ear. Oh! Hello, Christine. <laughs> nice. And she told the story with her ear. And she pretended she... Okay, can you do an example for us right here? Hello. <laughs> I know Jesus. <laughs> he loves me. Nice. Does he love you? You can use your great big voice. God says, God says, I love you. <laughs> and the little girls, they wanted to climb in Jesus' lap. And the disciples said, No, send those little kids away. Show me your ugly face. Pretend you're the disciples, you're sending the kids away. I want to see ugly faces on all the kids. <gasps> Jennifer, that's the best ugly face. Oh, you really did good. <laughs> and what, what did Jesus say? No. Let the children come unto me. Let them come. Let them come. I love them. For the kingdom belongs to them. It's not just for you big guys. It's for these little guys, too. So change your voice. Make it little. Change actions. Get the kids involved with the Bible story. And that's going to help your story get uh, be told. But that's not the only way. What if Jesus and his disciples are going to go out on a boat? <laughs> you can tell. This is, these are slices of apples. And it has a toothpick in the sail. 
And with the snack, you can tell the story. And the kids are all excited because they see they're going to get to eat a piece of boat. They're going to have some apple. That's great. But, well, you know, one day Jesus was talking and the people got hungry. And he told his disciples, go out there and find some food for them. You can find some food for them. All they could find was a little boy, just like you, who had a, a lunch. And he had five barley buns in it. So I have a basket, and it has five barley buns in it. <laughs> in this basket, I wonder if that's enough to feed this whole class in the nursery. What do you think, guys? Is, will we be able to share this? Will this be enough for no. the whole class? No. In a minute, we're going to find out. We're going to see. We're going to see if this will be enough, if we can share this. And then we're going to imagine when they picked it up, the mess they had. I think 12 basketfuls of leftovers after everybody was full. So you can tell the story with food. That's, that's what I'm demonstrating. Our curriculum, although it's not written for the nursery, I recommend the superintendent get a hold of it because it's got these ideas in it for the older kids to use and you can adapt them very easily mm. to the nursery. Very so good. that ideas like this will be in the, in the material. You also can use characters. This character is from our, our ant curriculum where he's digging in the ground, <laughs> subterranea. And this character is from our VBS about climbing the mountain in the snow. And he's a moose. He can come, you can get any kind of animal to help you tell the story. Even if one isn't in the story, you can put them in. Mm. Because May, there must have been some dogs that followed oh, yeah. the kids there must have been. to sit and listen to Jesus. So <laughs> the dog could be there, and when he has something to say, the children can help say it. So they can bark. So nice. what did he say? And the kids mm. will say, ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> or bark, 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 bark. Depends on what kind of dog you've got. Help it tell the story. Bring items that do tell the story. This is a rock. <laughs> it didn't cost me anything. I just went and found a rock. Free is always good. But there are rocks all over in the Bible. And every time as you're reading the Bible story and preparing what you're going to tell, bring something the kids can see. Mm. Even if it's as simple as a rock. Nice. So these are ways to make the Bible there's story. More. There's more? There's more. Oh my goodness. There's songs that ah, you can sing. Yes. You can memorize Bible verses with songs. The songs for nursery kids need to be very repetitive. And they need to be simple. Mm. So you can make one up, you can adjust one, or you can... Uh, we, I can think of quite a few in Spanish, unfortunately. Uh, nothing comes to mind no. right away well, from English. We were talking about maybe Father, Father Abraham. We could yeah. do Father Abraham had many sons. <laughs> that works if you're teaching Genesis to yeah. the kids. That's great. And it also involves some movement. You can't let the kids sit too long. And you can never let them sit and sit and sit and sit. So. Our next section is going to be about movement, and I'm going to be addressing that. I think we've covered it. All right, so that section we've got objects. Three. Oh, oh, this guy, this guy is Suki's Frederick, <laughs> and uh, I, he represents for me just a doll. Mm. I would bring a Barbie doll or a Ken doll, something that I can find secondhand, and. I would dress my Ken doll to be Peter, and he would show up and talk and act out the stories. And that allows the kids to act them out too. 
because that can be part of the toys that you have available during toy time, circle time, or uh, centers, during centers. And they can dress them. Mary, there's actually a Mary doll out there that I bought for Suki when she was little. And it came in Mary clothes, and uh, it, we, can, we can pretend she was different Marys in the Bible, not just Mama. Uh, but she was part of the story, so nice. Uh, that's also something okay. that you can, you need a visual to go with your story. So basically we've got food, puppets, and toys or stuffed animals, and even just using your ear or a rock. <laughs> to visualize <laughs> or sounds. When Moses was found in the Nile, don't you think there were ducks around? Okay kids, what does a duck sound like? So all the kids can quack. And, be able, and as you're telling the story of baby Moses or Jesus on the Lake of Galilee or fishermen out not getting any, any fish, there would be ducks around. The most important thing for the teacher, I should have said this in every section, is to have fun. Mm. And this is, represents to me having fun. And I, I wear silly hats. Oh, nice. To have fun. And when I'm talking about climbing the mountain in the snow, no, I just want the kids to know this is a fun place mm. and we're all having fun and the teacher needs to have fun too and not be a sourpuss who's telling everybody to be quiet all the time. Mm. Well especially when they're two years old they can't really be no, quiet. No they can't, they can't and it's your fault if they're not interested enough in what you're saying. All of a sudden oh. you've got to bring something out. <laughs> Wonder, they'll stop and look at you. You have their attention again, you can keep going. Get them involved. You guys quack too. Good. All right, so that's section three on the Bible story in the nursery book, taking care of the nursery with Vicki. All right, thank you. I don't know how we're doing the time. <laughs>